What's up, everyone? Um, my name is uh, Sudarshan. Uh, I work at Qualcomm as a Linux kernel developer, uh, and we are based off in uh, San Diego. Um, so on the agenda, I'll probably talk a bit more about myself and the team, um, and I'll explain something about memory page pooling. That's uh, a very, in a very generic fashion, what is memory page pooling? And what are the current limitations in uh, the generic uh, memory page pooling? And, and um, the topic is uh, memory page pooling with automatic refill. So basically, uh, we automatically refill the memory page pools uh, that we have. Um, so I'll explain a bit more about the automatic uh, refilling of the pools. And then I'll, I'll talk about the, the implementation of this automatic refill feature that we have put in our uh, DMA buff system heap uh, implementation. And I'll explain some uh, technical details about what we have implemented in our DMA buff uh, system heap. And then uh, numbers, numbers are always good. Um, I'll talk about the performance and latency numbers. Um, I'll show how, I'll probably describe about how this uh, automatic refilling feature helps with reducing the memory uh, allocation latencies. Uh, majorly for DMA buff uh, or for DMA buffers, and then the advantages and then the limitations of this feature. <coughs> so um, we are in San Diego. Uh, I work as a kernel developer uh, in Qualcomm Innovation Center Inc. My majorly my work is in memory management uh, in the Linux kernel, and my interests are also in firmware and system design, uh, and then computer architecture as well. And uh, we are also hiring right now. Uh, just a side note, we are trying to expand our team. So if anyone is interested to join as a kernel developer on our team, uh, do send me an email. Uh, my email ID is in the intro slide, or we can, or you can find me in the event uh, over here. So memory pooling. Um, so I'll explain this a bit more generic. Uh, I'm sure that most of you guys who are developers, you know, who have implemented, uh, you know, your use case or your application using some kind of a pooling. Uh, but just for the audience, you know, uh, I'll explain what this memory pooling is. So, so basically, you have this use case over here, um, and then you know that this use case is a memory intensive uh, application, and you know that's going to, uh, you know, frequently use uh, memory often here and then. So rather than having uh, the use case directly allocate from the system. For example, let's say you do malloc, uh, and then malloc goes to the, to the system and then tries to find the free list, tries to find the free, free memory in the system and then gives it back. So those are non-deterministic. Uh, I mean, sometimes the system is under memory pressure. These allocations will be you know, taking some, some time. So instead of allocating from the memory allocator or something called the body allocator in the Linux, Linux kernel, uh, we can uh, allocate or we can set aside some pools uh, memory pools just for this use case, uh, and then fill in those pools with some memory. And uh, that memory is always there for this use case to use whenever it wants. And this is a bit more deterministic because you have this this whole pool, um, you know, pool of memory over here, uh, always there for your use case to be used. Um, so it's much easier and much faster and much reliable as well uh, for this use case to have uh, memory pools that is dedicated for this use case. Uh, you know, to be used. So this is a general concept of memory pooling. Um, I'm sure most of the developers would have implemented this pooling concept in your drivers or in your use cases. Uh, so some of the advantages of memory pooling, um, as I mentioned, it uh, it's more deterministic or more predictable. Like, uh, you know, this can be used in real-time applications where you know, you have a use case that's trying to allocate memory and then you, you need it very fast. Uh, and then you need to be predictable as well, like, you know, how much allocation latency is going to be so that you can, uh, you know, write your, uh, uh, you know, application in real time uh, with a predictable, predictable manner. So it also reduces your allocation latency because it, you know, there's no uh, delay here uh, because you can directly fetch the memory from your pool. Uh, so it's just, uh, you know, uh, maybe just a free list, uh, you know, uh, deletion or, or getting a page from the free list. It also increases memory utilization uh, because you have this pooled memory which is dedicated for your use case 
and then you, you're going to utilize this more often. You're going to use it, you free it back, you're going to use it and free it back. So you actually utilize this memory much better compared to you know, getting pages from the system, uh, system body allocator. And this reduces fragmentation. Uh, you know, this I'll explain a bit more in, in the further slides, but uh, you, know, you, you can actually set aside a bigger chunks, chunks of pages, let's say 2 MB block of memory uh, uh, for the use case. And then you're going to only rely on this pool and you're not going to give it back to the actual system. Uh, you know, so, so that uh, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're actually taking this memory from the pool, a bigger chunk of memory from the pool, and then putting it back to the pool, and you're not interfering with the system uh, memory, uh, so that you know you're not putting all you know small chunks of memory into the system RAM, and then you're making it more spread across, and then that makes the memory more fragmented. So fragmentation is bad. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about what fragmentation is sometime later. And then, of course, yeah, efficient memory management. You know, you, you have all you have the memory always available for your use case. Um, so, what can be further improved? Um, you know, there are there are efficient um, you know memory allocation schemes for or buffer allocation schemes for like the general generic pools. But what can be further improved to you know improve uh, you know allocation latencies or you know uh, or to make sure that this memory that's there in the pool, I'm always going to have it when I need it. So here's where the the whole motivation is. Um, you know, memory pooling is great. You know, the memory is always there, but it so happens that uh, you know, some, most of the time or, or some of the time, that memory in the pool will not be there. You know, let's say you use up this memory, and then the use case needs more memory, and then it finds that there's no memory in the pool, and then now has to go and fetch it from the system RAM, which is a slower slower uh, path. So how do we make sure that we increase the probability that you know when a use case needs memory, the probability of memory that's there in the pool is always, or, or it's high. Uh, so how do we make sure that we fill the pools and then the memory is always resident when the use case needs it? Um, so this is where we come up with this, something called automatic refill uh, of the pools. So the word automatic here uh, defines that uh, you know it's not the use case that says when to uh, refill the pool, it's the kernel actually that takes care of it. So, so there's no hassle for the use case or the developer or the driver to uh, you know write code or to tune things to to make sure that your pools are all, all, you know always filled. Uh, but here the kernel actually takes care of all those things. The kernel knows about the memory stats in the system. The kernel knows when to refill it and when not to refill it, and when to defer refilling. So the whole uh, refilling of the pools is done automatically by the kernel, and hence it's called the automatic refill of the memory pools. So um, if you see in the right, I have this memory, uh, I have this generic pool here, memory pool, and I put some markers called the fill mark and then the low mark, and then I, I tell the kernel that, you know, if the memory is below the low mark, if the memory is getting depleted and it's been used by the use case, the kernel will actually find it and then uh, you know it will automatically kick in the, the k-threads, uh, the refill k-threads, and it will start refilling this pool. And it will refill the pool until this uh, fill mark has been reached. So basically, you have this pool here, think of it as a bucket, and then you know the, uh, it's getting depleted as in the use case starts to use the memory. And if it goes below the low mark, the kernel kicks in and then it knows that uh, uh, you know this memory pool is getting, getting depleted and then it'll automatically, it'll actually check the memory stats in system if there's enough free memory available to kind of refill this pool and it will start refilling until this fill mark is done. And this is all done uh, in, a, in an async fashion in a, in a k-thread uh, uh, and it's done all by the kernel. So that's the whole idea over here. Uh, you know, if the pool count is less than low mark, uh, the kernel wakes up the k-threads and then refills it until the fill mark. So here's a simple flowchart. Um, you know, basically we have the system heap lock, and then if, you know you check uh, uh, if your pool count is less than the fill mark or not. If it is, then you wake up the k -thread. And I'll explain a bit more about the mechanism of the refill. Uh, but here's a simplified uh, flowchart over here. Uh, you know, so basically you'll check is the memory less. You know, uh, is the pool count less than the fill mark? If it is, uh, then you will check the watermarks. 
So the the, the, the watermark is something uh, that the kernel checks uh, to know if you know system is under pressure, memory pressure or not. Uh, it's kind of a hint uh, to the kernel saying that you know is memory general uh, generally in the system available or not. So we check uh, the memory watermarks uh, for each of the zones or all the memory zones in the system. And if they are okay, then we go ahead and then fetch the uh, memory or, or the pages from the actual body allocator. So the K thread, the uh, refill K threads are the one that are actually getting memory from the body and then we'll give it back, give it to the pool. And then, uh, yeah, I'll explain about this order nine, order four, order zero. So they are basically two MB. 16 kilobyte uh, and then 4KB. So order uh, one, one page is 4K uh, in general, you know, systems. Um, so the refill K threads gets the memory from the body system and then puts it into the pool. So he, here's another flow chart maybe. Um, so when, when the K threads are being invoked, uh, it will get the pages from the body allocator and then it will keep refilling until the, the fill mark has been reached. Uh, and then once the fill mark is reached, it'll go back, go back to the sleep. So these are the pools. So instead of, you know, you have a use case, right, right, you know, directly trying to allocate memory from the body allocator, uh, it's the refill K threads over here that tries to, uh, you know, add memory to the pool for you. Uh, it's on automatically. So the shrinker is uh, an interesting concept here. Uh, these pools are attached to the shrinker. Uh, I'll explain. Uh, a bit more about what the shrinkers are. Uh, so a few things to consider, a few technical things to consider here. Um, the memory shrinker, uh, I'm not sure if most of you guys would have heard about what a shrinker is in the Linux kernel. So usually shrinkers are like uh, routines uh, that can be invoked or the kernel invokes this routine uh, when there is memory pressure in the system. So basically when, when there's less memory generally in the system, the kernel knows about it and then it invokes some demons uh, and then it does something called VM scan and invokes all these um, uh, you know, shrinkers. So the shrinkers are used uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to get some free memory from other drivers or other memory pool holders uh, basically. So if I have a driver and if my driver is using some pools, so those memory is simply sitting over there and if the, even if the use case is not using it, that memory is going to simply sit over there. But I want to give that extra memory in my pools when the system needs it or when the kernel needs it. So that job is done by the shrinker. Um, so the drivers of the modules can attach or, or can register to the shrinker via register shrinker routine here. And under memory pressure, the kernel invokes this routine. It does a VM scan. Uh, it goes and invokes to the, all the ones that are registered. And it'll ask, uh, you know, do you have free memory or not? And if the consumer of the pools or the memory says, hey, I have some free memory, you can take this. So it gets back uh, those memory from these drivers and then gives it back to the kernel and then checks if, you know, if it needs further memory from other uh, drivers or not, and then it calls the, the shrinkers again. So this is a very good, uh, uh, you know, an entity uh, where, you know, you have an extra free memory that's always there for you. But when, when the system needs memory, you know, there's no point to keep an extra memory for myself. So when the system needs memory, I'll just give it back. So that I can be doing uh, uh, by help of the shrinkers here. So um, <clears throat> does not impact any runtime memory regression, uh, but this feature helps in reducing memory allocation latency segment. So I'll explain about the last, uh, why the shrinker you know, uh, helps us with, uh, you know, uh, improving the allocation latency uh, without any impact in, you know, in, to the memory in the general system. So 2MB memory blocks, uh, this is also an important thing to can understand uh, because we, in the pools, we actually reserve, try to reserve two megabytes block. So this two megabytes block in an ARM64 platform, uh, you can, if you have a two megabyte block, you, that can be pointed via a single uh, mapping in your, uh, you know, uh, in your memory descriptor. So usually in the PMD level. Uh, so for example, in, at the leaf level, uh, you have these PTEs, and if your pages are 4K grindly, each of the entries in your PTEs uh, or in your last level, you'll have each of these as your PTE entries, and then they'll all be pointing to your 4K. So imagine if you have, uh, you know, a two megabytes 
and then you will have so many levels of uh, uh, entries over here, each pointing to a different uh, uh, 4K blocks. But if you have, if I have a nice contiguous 2MB block here, uh, that can be pointed by a single PMD block mapping, and you know this is doable in ARM64 platforms, uh, where it can be set as a single entry, uh, you know, in your uh, descriptor. So the the advantage of this is, uh, you know, in the in the MMU side, uh, you know, it will reduce uh, page table walks. So basically, if I have to get to this level, I have to do a bit of a page table walk, go to the leaf level, and then find this uh, uh, offset over here, and then go to this page. But if I have a single block over here, and if I want to access any of the memory in this block, I just have, uh, you know, just have a few levels of page table walks where I can get to this memory block here. And uh, since there is, you know, one entry compared to many entries here, I'll have reduced TLB pressure uh, for the MMUs. Uh, so reduced TLB pressure, uh, meaning there'll be imp improved uh, throughput where your device or the CPU access will have much faster way of accessing this memory uh, if you have reduced the TLB pressure. So this is an advantage, uh, uh, you know, if you have like multimedia use cases, you know, like camera, video, uh, or graphics uh, that requires a huge amount of memory, uh, and then you have this block mappings, and uh, you know, you have, imagine if you have one GB of memory required for your camera or your video uh, driver, and if you have two MB blocks here, you'll have lesser entries compared to you know, 1 GB divided by 4K number of entries in your uh, descriptor here. So uh, these K threads, uh, you know, since they would maybe often run in the background, uh, trying to refill the pools, we want to make sure that these don't hog the CPU much, and we, we make sure that, uh, we have to make sure that they don't run and then consume more power, and they don't run when the system is trying to, you know, you know go into sleep or uh, in, in suspend. So we, we do this by you know making sure we lower the priority or the nice values of these K threads uh, so that you know they don't get uh, 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 preempted or you know so, so that other critical tasks don't get preempted by uh, these uh, K threads here. So we make sure that these are you know it uh, it can refill the thread at a very minimal impact uh, when there's memory free memory in the system and also. Uh, it doesn't uh, impede with other critical tasks are running in the system. So we just lower the priority uh, or the nice value of this K-thread tasks. So the fill mark and the low mark that I mentioned, um, you know, the fill mark basically is up to which I want to refill the pool. And then this uh, low mark is when, you know, if the pool corners goes below that value, then I, you know, wake up the K-threads. And this can be configured uniquely for a specific use case. I mean, uh, you know, you can have this whole auto pooling mechanism attached to a specific use case that has specific pools, uh, you know, for this use case. Uh, so this whole automatic refilling can be attached to any general pooling mechanism or pooling scheme that you have in your driver. So in the last uh, one, uh, uh, you know, this is also a bit more important where we try to defer refilling if we see something called ping pong. If, for example, the K-threads try to, uh, you know, refill the pools, and by thereby, you know, the K-threads trying to do page lock or allocate the page on the body allocator, and then it puts it in the pool, but you're actually getting memories from the system, and then you might put the system under pressure, and then that might call your shrinkers, and then shrinkers will come again and then take the memory from the pool. So K-threads try to put memory in the pool, and then the shrinkers try to get memory from, from the pool. So. We have seen uh, cases like you know dust ping pong all the time. You know you refill and then you dip, you take it away and you refill and take it away. So when such things happens, uh, we do a, a further aggressive check for the watermarks uh, to make sure that if the K threads are getting memory from the pool, it's not going to put the system under memory pressure. So we do a f aggressive check, and if it does, uh, we are going to defer uh, the refilling until a certain window. Uh, that. So that window size can be configured, uh, but generally we do defer it until it's safe to allocate memory from the system. So um, we have implemented this auto refilling feature uh, in the DMA buff system heap. Uh, you know that's that by, that's done by Qualcomm, and um, we have done this, uh, I guess, in, in the four chipsets before. Um, in SM8 
81 uh, in SM8250. Uh, these are the code, uh, you know, for the dynamic page pool and then for the system heap. Uh, you know, feel free to look into the code. Uh, you know, this is all open source uh, in the, the code in Arrow. So over here we have done uh, something where we have three pools, uh, each for cached use cases and then uncached use cases. Uh, and then we, we have uh, each pools of order nine, order four, and order zero. So in terms of uh, numbers, uh, you know, if you have a 4K page uh, configuration, order nine is two MB, order four is 16 kilobytes, and then order zero is uh, four kilobytes. Uh, so we, we try to get the bigger block as much as possible to reduce fragmentation and and as I explained before, to get those two MB block mappings that will reduce, you know, TLB pressure and uh, it'll improve the throughput of the of the devices. And we have set the values as uh, uh, these are default values, but can be configured based on the DDR size attached. Uh, and and if you have a low DDR as well, but generally in our system we have made as you know 100 MB is the fill mark, and then uh, low mark is 40 MB. So if you see, basically we have six pools, you know, three each of nine, four, and zero for cached, and nine, four, and zero for, un uh, for uncached. So six and two hundred is like 600 MB. So imagine that this whole memory is sitting in these pools. And uh, if the system needs, if the system is under memory pressure, we would definitely want to give it back to the system. Uh, you know, we don't want to hold this 600 MB as long as possible. So that's where the shrinkers actually are helpful. Um, this is more of a graphical representation. Uh, you, know, you know, you have the system heap cached and uncached pools here, or order nine, four, and zero. Uh, fill mark is hundred, low mark is forty. Uh, each of these pools have its own uh, K-thread uh, uh, refill mechanism here. Uh, one for the cached, another for the uncached. So, uh, so we have done this uh, uh, in our. Uh, Q, you know, Qualcomm system uh, for the DMA buff here, you know, system heap allocator. So talking about the numbers, um, numbers are always great. It says how well the, the feature is doing. So if you look, um, you know, some of the bigger gains over here, which is like, you know, increases the pool utilization by 90%, uh, and then increases the order nine allocation. So this is a big gain for, you know, multimedia use cases, uh, uh, you know, like camera and video and graphics, you know, who have GBs of uh, DMA memory requirement. And if they all get uh, as much as two MB blocks, it actually reduces the TLB pressure and increases the device throughput. Uh, and another thing is, uh, you know, it decreases the average latency by 2.5%. And then it also decreases the number of app kills, uh, for example, by LMKD in Android, uh, by you know up to 40% here. So these are the gains that we saw uh, in our system heap allocator, and uh, hence we have been implemented this feature, and we have been putting this feature ever since uh, in our system heap allocator. And here's one graph um, where we have compared in the SM8150, which doesn't have the feature and then in the SM8250, which has this feature. And uh, these are all corrected for, you know, uh, uh, for the CPU horsepower. It's like, you know, uh, the, the, you'll see that the SM8250 has better CPU horsepower than SM8150. But we want to measure what is the gain that you have with this feature enabled. So if you see in the graph, uh, the blue one is the cached alloc for SM8150. And then the and then the orange one is the same cached one for SM8250, which has the feature enabled. So if you see in the in the gray and the, the orange one, you have uh, you know system heap allocator from you know increasing from few megabytes till few hundreds of megabytes here. And there's a bigger and lower is better, of course. And the latency is actually much much better for the uh, SM8250, the orange one, uh, which has this auto refilling feature. And this is because it makes sure that your pool is always uh, has memory in it, and then has a majority of two megabyte uh, block uh, memory, which is available, and you know reduces fragmentation, and and with reduced uh, latency, you get this nice reduced uh, allocation latency for the system heap. Uh, so pros and cons. Um, 
the pros are that you know it improves the latency. Uh, you know, it makes sure that uh, the pools are not empty most of the time. Uh, it makes sure that the memory is there in the pool whenever uh, or every time when the use case needs the memory, and increases the probability that the the, the memory the pools have memory in it. Um, and if you look at the con, uh, the only con is the extra work where the cathodes have to refill this pool, uh, and then they have to run it in background. Uh, and we try to measure the CPU burn for this, like how much extra work has been taken by this refill threads. But uh, we couldn't find any significant, uh, you know, increase in the uh, in the power or any significant impact to other critical tasks in the system, you know, where we'll have jitters and and things like that uh, for the other critical tasks. So very minimal uh, impact, uh, and also with the shrinker, you make sure that when system is under pressure, you give back this memory from the pools to the system. You know, you don't keep those, uh, you know, you don't hold this for long, and you give it back when the system needs it. So minimal cons, and then you have, you know, maximum pros here. So the usage of this, uh, of course, if you have a use case which is a, a memory intensive use case, uh, like multimedia use cases, uh, video camera and graphics, you know, who require, you know, multiple GBs of memory, uh, of DMA memory. And for, for such a uh, scheme, you know, imagine allocating, for example, 3 GB of memory via the page allocator. That is going to take a bunch of time. So instead of that, you have this pooling mechanism, and then you have you attach this auto refilling mechanism, and you make sure that your pool is always uh, you know holds memory or some memory when it needs it. Uh, so it's, it's very useful for you know multimedia use cases, which is you know memory intensive uh, applications, and real time embedded systems where predictive memory latency is required. Where uh, you know since it's all real time. Uh, we need to know, you know, this, this give a predictable value, a predictable memory latency that, uh, you know, if I'm trying to allocate this much memory, I know that it's going to be this much uh, latency, which is predictable. So these are helpful for real-time use cases. And use cases that requires higher order pages, like the 2MB blocks, uh, you know, uh, again, same as the multimedia use cases where you want to improve the throughput of your device, uh, you know, where access to the memory, device accesses from the, to the memory, you need to be faster. And you make sure you do that by reducing the TLB pressure or reducing the, TL, uh, the page table walks uh, uh, by making sure you have more two megabyte blocks of memory in your pools. And applications where you know that memory will be frequently allocated and freed. Um, so this, uh, this whole auto refilling feature can be attached to any generic memory pooling schemes that you have uh, for the so for, for such gains. So just to wrap up, um, you know, if you see, this all is this all is implemented by software alone. Uh, you know, there's no uh, you know improvement in hardware or there's no maturity in the hardware. You get these gains just by purely software alone, um, and uh, you're trying to reduce uh, and it helps to reduce. Your allocation latencies by a lot, it reduces app kills and you know reduces TLB pressure, increases the you know decreases the fragmentation, increases the pool utilization. So you have a lot of gains over here uh, uh, for minimal con, uh, and since you have shrinkers and everything, it, it takes care of giving back memory to the system, and it's all purely implemented by software. And uh, it's, it's good to see that uh, such a future can actually help reduce uh, latency by a lot. If you see in that graph. Uh, you know, without any hardware maturity here. So I guess that's all I had. Um, I'll give the next few minutes for questions. Yep. You can submit it upstream. Um, so we, we are planning to have submitted upstream, yes. Um, it's but it's been there in the system heap allocator for long, and we haven't uh, yet submitted upstream as an RFC. So uh, the pool size as well. How do you come up with the? How do you define the pool size? Uh, yeah. So, so so right now we are actually keeping it as uh, configurable. Um, so right now we have just set it as 100 MB and then 40 MB. 
but of course this should be dependent on the use case and dependent on the the RAM size that you have and maybe somehow uh, you can let the kernel to figure out itself uh, I know that uh, tunings are always bad and scary for developers uh, where you don't have to intervene with, into such tunings uh, it's always very hard to know what value to be put uh, for different use cases and different DDR sizes so you can somehow uh, have an idea where the kernel can decide by itself uh, best uh, case, uh, best effort case, and the kernel can decide the, f the fill marks and the, and the low marks. So, so just to reiterate then, your, your different order sizes relate to uh, the, the size of the allocation. So order zero is 4K and order nine is two, 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 meg two megabytes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this will be useful for, uh, you know, DMA applications. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I guess you, you work on camera, so, uh, you know, always having two megabyte blocks is always good for the uh, IMMUs for the device uh, because it reduces the number of entries in the TLBs, and with reduced uh, entries in TLB, it reduces the, uh, you know, the TLB pressure. So, hence, it increases the throughput. And uh, this is also, like, been confirmed in our system where if we have more, 2 MB blocks, it actually improves the, the throughput of the devices, the memory access of these devices. So we try to fill in this pool with 2 MB first, and of course these are costly orders, and then if you don't have a 2 MB, we'll try to allocate uh, a 4 MB, uh, a 16 kilobytes uh, page into the pool, and that also is a costly order, uh, and if that's not available, then we'll just go ahead with the whole classical 4K page, trying to put the 4K page in the pool. I was just going to ask, uh, so in your comparison slide um, on 8150, is that just a regular mempool? This one? Yeah. Uh, this is a regular uh, system heap uh, memory or, uh, or a DMA buff memory. I don't know enough about DMA buff. Is, is that a mempool? It's, it's a generally a mempool, yes. I mean, uh, yeah, it's basically like a heap, uh, uh, you know, system heap where a user space can allocate from the system heap, and then it just wraps it up as a DMA buff, and then exports it, exports uh, it, uh, so that this use case can now uh, share this DMA buff to someone else. Uh, so, but it's generally, a, uh, you know, a general memory uh, that's been allocated from the system heap and given to the use case. <coughs> All right, thank you. Generic um, use case, a uh, lot of uh, user space application would like to allocation. Yeah. I mean, uh, allocate memory from um, the system, yeah. which will go through the kernel. Yeah. And kernel will go and will will get the memory from the free list page allocator, page even uh, and the slot allocator, right? Yep. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if you can make this one apply yeah. to the generic MM framework. Yeah. So, so for now, we have attached this to uh, you know this whole automatic pool refill mechanism to a system allocator. But the same concept can be applied to any any one of them. So if you have like a, I'm not sure maybe in user space, but let's say in the in the kernel driver, yeah. uh, just like the gen pool and other things. Uh, if you have a separate uh, you know driver in the kernel that you know implements this, yeah. so you can have a use case. Yeah. If you have a pool and you can register to this automatic pool refill entity, and that will help you to. That will help to you know, refill the, the pools automatically. Oh. So, so right now, it's just only attached to the system people allocator, but the same concept can be done anyway. Yeah, the, the whole idea is that uh, you know, uh, there's no one actually 
uh, you know, there's no one, or the use case has to uh, take care of or responsible for refilling the pools by yourself, where you might you might not know about the memory statistics of the system, but so you let the kernel to do it automatically for you. Yeah. Well, well, when the you know the memory stats are safe mm -hmm. and safe to allocate memory, and yeah. then you, you you let all the all this work to be done by the kernel, yeah. so that the use case doesn't have to worry about like when to when do I refill. How do I refill? When to allocate? When to free and everything? So this whole mechanism uh, is, you know, the, the whole idea is just that, you know, uh, to keep the memory, uh, uh, this whole memory pool instead of keeping it empty, you just refill it uh, as and when it's it's, it's to require. Um, so this concept can be done implied in anywhere, uh, even if you have a user space. So uh, if this applies to our generic MM framework. Yeah. So this approach will be uh, maybe uh, implemented in MM, yeah. uh, M M memory pool, memory pool. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, for example, if you have a, like a gen pool, uh, you know, to use the uh, to use a gen pool as like buffer uh, like, uh, management scheme, mm -hmm. and you can ask it to also enable auto refilling, uh, yeah. uh, so that the kernel will also automatically refill it for you. So su such things can be done where it can be applied generally in the MM. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm planning to send this as an RFC. I mean, it, you know, not just for the system heap, for the DMA buffer allocation, for or for any any generic uh, driver, you know, and that that can leverage this whole mechanism of okay. automatic so refill. So for a long term, um, just I'm just wondering, do you have any plan uh, to um, push to the generic MM framework? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a plan. We want to upstream it. Okay, uh, okay cool. But the, the first step, you, you want to uh, push to uh, drive a DMM buffer? Yeah. After, it, after this is accepted by upstream, you will go. Yes. You are going to push to MM general framework, right? Yeah, so first it's going to be on system heap allocate for the DMA buff. Yeah. And then MM, because you know that you know any changes goes to MM, they are very strict know, about that. I know. <laughs> So it's, it is, it's really it's really difficult to get a step, especially for a new features, new features for yes. MM framework. Yeah, it will maybe be reviewed for a couple of times. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, I work with the MM. I know. I mean, it's there's a lot of scrutiny for MM, you know. And then we have lots of changes coming to the MM. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> I know and, that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the, the the plan is now do it for the system allocator, which is not very much generic MM. Yeah. And then we'll see how the upstream reacts to that, and then once it's implemented, it's in, and then we can let uh, the upstream people know, okay, why not do it for the generic MM as well? You know, seems like a good idea. Yeah. You can attach this feature to the gen pool allocation. So, okay. so something like that, that's that's the pathway, but uh, yeah, first we'll be trying to upstream it to the, at least put the idea out to the upstream and yeah. uh, show that this kind of works. With the software, you get this, you know, all those gains and, you know, reduces allocation latency now.